Now, I do love me some seekers. I mean, after all, with the siege mold, I have nine as it currently stands with the Earthrise mold while I have the main trio and I'm a bit critical of them. I thought that that mold, the Earthrise mold, works best for the Conehead. So you can imagine how pleased I am to be able to take a look at two of them today, Dirge and Ramjet. Both of them, they're going to be our focus this time around in the latest Got By True review. Hey all, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, your most humble of hosts, Dennis Moulton, a.k.a. Gotbot. As always, man, please like, comment, share, of course, subscribe, and while you're at it, light them up, baby. And hit that notification bell, please. It helps me out a ton. It lets you know when content of all sorts goes up here on the channel. Uh, check out Machinery of Man, the Everything Factor, all the groups that I'm either a mod or a min for, as well as all my social media links. All of that is down in the description below. If you're in a position to help the channel to grow, you can use the donate link. Check us out on Patreon. See what we offer to you through Teespring. Or, of course, hit the join button right here on YouTube to become a channel member. And I want to give a huge thank you, a huge shout out to Masterfire. I'm going to put a link to his channel down in the description. Because he is the guy who hooked me up with this duo. I pre-ordered them a long time ago. That pre-order has still not been filled in Canada. These guys really didn't come out. I've been waiting for them for a long time. I liked the thrust use. I like the um, G2 sandstorm use. I've been critical of the main use. We're going to see all of those. We're even going to see these guys compared to their classics offerings. We're going to see just how well they stack up. Now, one of these guys actually does have a little bit of a QC issue going on. Luckily, it's not major, but it is something worth noting. And it really highlights the problem with exclusivity. Without any further ado, let's head over to the table and take a closer look at this duo. And so what a journey it's been, and I cannot thank Masterfire enough for hooking me up with the Amazon exclusive Conehead whatever it was, Seeker Elite or whatever it was, two-pack of Dirge and Ramjet in Canada. As of this recording, to my recollection, we got zero of these. I put in a pre-order on July the 17th of 2020. <laughs> this recording is in June of 2021, and I have gotten... Again, as of this recording, nine delay emails. I don't know if they would ever come in stock. Rumor has it that they went from being Amazon exclusive to certain retailers picking them up, and I don't know if that's true or not. But thankfully, finally, I have these guys added to my collection, and I did want them for a long time. I have been pretty critical of the Earthrise Seeker Mold, but I did say that I think it works better for the Conehead. Speaking of which, here we have the four Coneheads that I have together. Yes, four, because I actually did get Sandstorm. I looked at Thrust back in episode 8, 10. I was really lucky to get him. So very happy. I really do dig this Thrust for the record. G2 Sandstorm I looked at in episode 807. And I'll say this, I think that the Sandstorm is the most successful use of this mold. Since we're speaking about the Earthrise Seeker mold, here is all of them. I did look at the Skywarp and the Thundercracker in episode 750 when I really kind of compared the Siege versus Earthrise Seekers. And I looked at old Starscream in episode 668 when I compared him with the Siege. And I'm not going to lie to you. I find the Siege to be the superior mold. Certainly for Robot. But there is definitely something very, very rewarding about seeing the plane modes. You may notice that all of these guys have landing gear on the front. That is courtesy of Grimlock Gone. Um, so I'm, I'm very thankful to have that as well. About the only other thing that makes sense to do as a comparison in this mode is to have the classic deluxes next to the new Voyagers. Now, when I, in the past, critiqued the Earthrise mold, I did so looking at the main Seeker trio of Starscream, Thundercracker, and Skywarp, which we've had innumerable versions of. We had the classics, we had the fall of Cybertron, we had the um, Siege, and then we had the Earthrise. And what that 
showed me was that those characters could be done better than what Earthrise gave us. Because in its essence, what Earthrise is, is an updated version of this classics mold. That's why it's already seemed kind of dated. But when it comes to the Coneheads, the story is a little bit different. We don't have Fall of Cybertron or Siege versions of the Coneheads. Certainly not official, anyway. So this is the first time that they've been updated since this old mold. And in this case, I would say that the Voyagers are indeed superior. They do rectify certain issues that this mold has, especially in terms of robot mode articulation. We'll get to that a little bit later, but this is kind of how they all look together. I would be remiss, if not derelict in my duty, if I did not point out that this particular copy of Ramjet actually has a QC issue. This piece of the wing over here is the wrong piece. It's the same as this piece over here. So I have two of this side, none of this side. If anybody has the opposite problem, let me know. Maybe we can trade sides. It doesn't really affect things too much, but it is slightly jarring when you look at the plane mode. I didn't notice it at first, but once I did, I was like, oh man. And this is part of the problem with exclusives. If this was just bought in a store, most of us would take this, return it, and get one that was assembled properly. However, being an exclusive and almost an impossible to obtain exclusive, you kind of just got to live with the imperfection. Shame on Hasbro for not having better QC. That being said, old Ramjet here still looks gorgeous. This is very quintessentially the way he looked on the 80s program. If we look at Ramjet here, arguably, some people might say that there should be more black kind of going down around right here. In some animation cells it is, in some it's all white. I remember it as all white, but I understand that some people might have that criticism. Some people might also say that these cylindrical pieces here, rather than being stark black, should be a gunmetal gray. Again, that varied a little bit. Honestly, I look at this and I think it's pretty quintessentially. It's about as quintessentially um, ramjet as we're going to end up getting for the guy, I believe. And usually his cockpit section up front, though it's orange here, is usually like a whitish color. I guess it's supposed to be more of like a see-through type of thing. But I like this because it stands out. What about the transformation? Well, we've seen the transformation kind of before for this mold. We'll only do it here super duper quickly because we don't need to, you know, really spend much time on it. So um, a couple of things I guess different here is the legs, of course, unlike the classics, they uh, open up and come down. These leg pieces were in front of the hip skirt rather than in under it. We can close those up and uh, split the legs, toes, forward, heel, back. Uh, you can put these back if you want, but I tend to kind of leave them out mostly because he had them out. You can flip this piece up thusly. And now this one, like it can still flip up. I mean, it's fine. It just doesn't quite fit right. Then we can take off that from the back uh, front there. And I tend to use the portion here on his back to stick it in, but we won't do it yet because of course we have to actually get the back apart to get the arms and whatnot out. Um, tend to bring the nose cone forward, press these. Big shout out to Kato's collection for uh, the idea of pressing in on those uh, pylons a little bit. We turn this around and collapse it into the chest and we should be able to bring it up over, bring that back. I don't have it quite collapsed in the chest. Of course, it doesn't want to quite collapse in the chest on camera now. There. This comes down on the back. Again, the arms. We... Hmm, see if I can remember this, because this is always a nuisance too. There, we open that out. And we bring that down. I think the arms of the Siege were more, more elegant and worked better. I don't know why they didn't just use the Siege arms. I think they still could have worked in here, no problem. So we bring that down. Again, over here. We open it up. We bring this down. And we close it up. And boom. Of course, we have to put his null rays in. He's gone off screen. But really, in essence, this is Ramjet. And now with things adjusted slightly, we can put his 
null ray in here and his other null ray over here. The landing gear piece, it fits in right there in the back. This comes down. And now, boom, in the end, here we have Ramjet in his robot mode. And here he is next to his classic self, which I did do a bit of custom paint work on, like the orange down here. And I use orange instead of red because it's orange on the back of his wings. This is definitely more stylized. I do like the kind of clear or smoky color of the cockpit section. And I do wish, like here's the thing, the forearms and hands of neither of these is correct. The forearms are supposed to be white, the hands are supposed to be black. So with the Earthrise one, we have white forearms, white hands. With the Classics one, we have black forearms, black hands. I think the Japanese version had it right with the Classics mold. Um, not really any loser here. They're both neat iterations. The articulation of this guy, quite limited. The hip skirt doesn't move, so that means limitations to the forward motion of the leg. The knees work fine, generally. The arms, while they can, you know, go out to the side, and they can go around here. They can't go all the way around because they get caught up on this wing piece. So there are a couple limitations. I do think that the Classics mold was more successful for the cone heads than it was for the main trio, personally speaking. What about with old Ramjet here in terms of scores? Well, I pointed out a couple of minor things in the plane mode and the robot mode, the hands, that's about the only thing I can really point out. The face probably should be a darker gunmetal-y type of gray, but I'm going to say it's a solid nine and a half. Like, this is a well-done Ramjet, right down to the Decepticon logos on the inside of his wings here. Nine and a half, in terms of the transformation, it's a fine transformation. It's a familiar feeling transformation. I do feel like the... Uh, Arms, like the tolerance isn't as bad here as it is on the like Skywarp Thundercracker Starscream version of the mold. I feel like that that mechanism for kind of unfurling the forearms is rougher there than it is on the cone heads. I'm going to say that the transformation is it's about an eight. It's all right. I think it could be done better, but it's all right. So a nine and a half and an eight. Right now the guy's like a nine point two five. What about the articulation? The head goes. Up and down, it can go left and right. Be careful when you're transforming it because there's paint up here and you really don't want to go scraping it off if you can help it. I have scraped it off, so I'm going to have to touch that off. That was my own fault. Um, the arms can go all the way around, out to the side. Uh, elbow to a little over 90 degrees, bicep swivel. The wrists don't move. They can go forward, but it breaks the sculpt, so that's a bummer. No waist, that's a bummer. One solid hip skirt piece. I wish that was three pieces. That's a bit of a bummer. But the leg goes forward this far, uh, which is farther than the classics. Maybe not by a lot, but it is farther than the classics. We do have a thigh swivel. We do have a knee to 90 degrees. We do have toes that go forward and back, heel that goes forward and back, and we do have ankle tilt. I'm going to say that the transformation for the most part is effective. A waist would be nice, no doubt about it. Outside of a waist, honestly, a wrist would be nice. I think that's about it. I'm going to say the transformation is about a nine. It's, it's good. It does a lot of what you want, but it has a couple. Uh, you know what? No, I got to say it's about an eight and a half, honestly. It, it, you can get a lot of poses, but it'd be nice if it was a big better. Overall score for the guy, he was getting a 9.25, now he's getting an 8.5 for that, about an 8.75, 8.85. It is a good update, no doubt about it. It is a needed update, but it's still not perfect and there's still room for improvement. The cone heads aren't prolific enough that I think we're going to get that anytime soon. I think this is going to be the going norm for a long time. Now, what about Dirge? Before I talk about Dirge for a moment, I just want to talk about his face. I get it, this is supposed to be a screaming face, much like Skywarps, but I look at this and I feel like all Dirge is doing is yawning. I don't know, is it just me? Okay, so here's our boy Dirge, next to his classics iteration of himself. I feel like the 
new one, the Earthrise one, not only has more of an accurate size, but his coloration is definitely more accurate. Now, in terms of the articulation, it's going to be exactly the same as it was with Ramjet. In terms of the transformation, it's exactly the same as it was with Ramjet. So, again, this guy by rights should probably be an 8.75. The only thing that we can really kind of talk about differently here is his paint apps. And are the paint apps good enough here to give him a little bit of a higher bump than that 8.75 or 8.85 total that Ramjet had. Well, the cockpit section should be, I don't think I got this quite done right there. Uh, the cockpit section, again, it shouldn't be orange. It should be more of like a grayish color, like a translucent color, more like it is on the classics. The Blue looks accurate on the Earthrise. The forearms and the hands look accurate. The null ray is accurate. The knees have all the accurate detail. Same going down the legs. All of that is accurate. Same with the toes. Same with the wings. And all of his wings are painted. I've heard of different shades on the two wings. Luckily, this one has the same shade on both sides. Right down to the Decepticon logo being on the lower wings. About the only imperfection that I can levy here, and I can't call it imperfection, stylization is more accurate. If I take this guy out of it, is honestly the shape of the wings on the classics looks a little more accurate. I feel like that this kind of straightened off piece up right here is slightly stylized. It should be more of a like straight up to a point. Such a minor gripe. Honestly, I he's almost perfect. 9.5, 9.75 for his paint apps and overall look. If the total score for Ramjet was an 8.75, just to make math easy, then I think the total score for Dirge here is more like 9.25, 9.3. Overall, I would say this duo, this set, as a whole, is about a 9, man really strong nine. And since we have both of them here, it seems only fair that we kind of show off the whole family photo with all of these molds in their robot mode, which looks, of course, like this. Here is everybody, and honestly, of all seven of these guys, I think that Sandstorm is the one that this mold works the best for. Because on my copy of Sandstorm, everything is tolerance perfect. The kneecaps don't pop off. Nothing is nothing is a problem with them. I do find the kneecaps on the main trio do pop off. I, I, I like it for the cone heads. I'm not a huge fan of it for the main trio, if that makes any sense. Do I think they can do better? Yes. Do I think they will do better? For the main trio, yes, they will do better. For the cone heads... I doubt that they'll do anything better for the main line anytime soon. Um, I, they're just not prolific enough. Do I think that this set is worth getting? Absolutely. They most definitely are quintessential cone heads. Of course, that said, only you can decide which trio matches your collection best. Some people will still stick with the classics because it matches their collection best. And there's an argument to be made for that. There's still nothing wrong with them, despite their limitations. The new ones, they do still have limitations. They just have less of them and arguably more accuracy. It really depends on your taste. And, of course, there are those that would say, hey, I don't want either of these. I want to go MP, and that's cool, too. But focusing on the two-pack of Ramjet and Dirge, they're a beautifully done update. Overall, the duo is about a 9. It is well done. It looks nice. Tons of painted detail. I am very happy. I am super thankful for Masterfire for helping me to get these guys. Would I advise getting them? Absolutely. Would I advise overpaying for them? No. No. Don't overpay. But they are a tremendous duo. And here we are once again. And here they are. Like I've said for a long time, I feel like the main trio of Seekers will be redone and I feel like they're going to be done better than what the Earthrise mold gave. I don't think the Coneheads are going to be done too often. I really don't. And while you can get some 3D parts to turn, uh, you know, some custom molds of the Siege into, 
like Tetra Jet versions of the Coneheads. This is really the Coneheads that I grew up with and these are the lads I've been wanting to have. I love them. I really, really do. I think they turned out really well. I think the mold works infinitely better for these guys than for the main trio. Would I like a waist? Yes. Would I, um, you know, I like for the arms to be a little better engineered? Yes. Honestly, I really wish we were using those siege arms. But as it is, I like this. I think it works the best for Sandstorm. Everything is like butter on that guy, but it works quite well for these two. It's unfortunate that that little wing piece is uh, misassembled on this guy. And again, were this just able to go to the store and able to return it and exchange it, great, I would. You can't do that. As a matter of fact, this set has become virtually impossible to get. So if yours is messed up, too bad, so sad. Yours is messed up. I think that's a problem with exclusivity. It's a problem with smaller runs if you can't ensure the QC quality. That's the key. You can't do it small. You can't make it exclusive if you can't ensure the QC, as far as I'm concerned. That's just my take. But I'm happy to have these guys. I feel very uh, accomplished having the entire Conehead Trio updated. They're the Coneheads for me. Are they the Coneheads for you? Let me know what you think about this duo. Let me know which Coneheads work the best for you in your collection. I, pre I appreciate you guys coming by, giving me some of your extremely valuable time. I do know how important it is to you. If you're in a position to help the channel to grow, you can use the donate link. Check us out on Patreon. See what we offer to you through Teespring, or of course, hit the join button right here on YouTube to become a channel member. Don't forget, that somehow, some way, each and every single solitary day, man, you do make a difference. You can hit that subscribe button while you're at it. Just throwing that out there. And I look forward to the next time, baby, that you and I get together to have another visit either in the live streams on Thursday nights at the stop motion premieres when they happen, or the old fashioned way right here inside the videos.